My better days are ahead. I say my better days are ahead. Your better days are ahead. I want to let you know that your life has no choice than to get sweeter. Because that is the divine plan for you. He said the part of the joss is like a shiny light. It will shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. I want to let you know this year will be sweet for you. I say it will be sweet for you. I say it will be sweet for you. No matter what has happened, it will give way for something more glorious. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today, the heavens open for you. Today, the heavens open for your family. If you are saying amen, say better amen. You will not end where your enemy expects you to end. If you are saying amen, say better amen. God will disappoint the cancel of your evil wishes. Say amen like a believer. In this service today, God will break protocol to give you a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Congratulations. That is what they will be telling you. Congratulations. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Praise God. Wednesday is supposed to be Valentine's Day. But because uh, we cannot break ministry protocol by saying that we want to do Valentine, we are shifting it to Sunday. Do you agree with me? Uh -huh. So all of us will be there that day to be uh, doing it together. In Jesus' name. Now we have been um, talking about uh, voters card. I think um, we will start with us, all the pastors, this week. If you don't do it, you won't sit here again. <laughs> so that they will know now that I'm serious. Then the following week, Dickens and Dickness. If you don't do it, you won't have communion again. Then after that, we'll inquire. <laughs> if you don't do it, if I see you here... Your gate pass is your voter's card. <laughs> Praise God. Then I will now be catching all the people that are sitting in front here. Praise God. We are serious. <laughs> we have been binding and praying. It's now time for us to go and collect our voter's card. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So all heads of units submit the names of everybody in your unit. The violent take it by force. So, will be, you need to be assigned this week. No one will miss. You must go there and collect your own. Are you here around saying that? Is it for me to catch everybody here? Me? I can catch everybody here one by one. I know how to do it, but I won't tell you so that you won't dodge. <laughs> Praise God. So, the remaining days of the month of February, I expect everybody in this church to collect their voter's card. And it's very easy and simple. The moment they give it to you, you can verify it online. Yes, you can verify it online. So there's no need to say, uh, they, they gave me fake card. It's a lie. The moment it has been keyed into the system electronically, nobody can delete it. I hope you know now in, the, in Kano, they've started practicing how to use the electronic voter's card. So we must be ahead, though, in Jesus' name. If you are saying amen, say amen. amen. Sure. Praise God. In this service, we're we'll focusing on the mystery of kingdom addiction. The mystery of kingdom addiction. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Until you drive yourself to the point of becoming an addict, nothing good work in your hand and in your life. If nothing drives you crazy, you are not yet an addict. As far as this kingdom is concerned, you are not permitted to flourish under God until you are a kingdom addict. Why? God searches your heart to determine where he places you on the earth. Scripture says where a man's heart is, that is where his treasures are. That's where his treasures are. So giving God his place is what determines your own place. So until he has his place in your heart, you don't have a place on the earth. The heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. So your place on the earth is determined by God. No wonder there are many wanderers, strugglers. Nothing good yet is showing in their life. Why? They have not established their hearts for God. No wonder he said again, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Not your cash. God is not a beggar. He's not hungry. He's not looking for what to collect from you. But rather, he's looking for what to add to you. So, kingdom addicts enjoy unexplainable blessings and liftings. Unexplainable favor. Strange open doors. But the order has been upturned. A lot of changes are taking place. Let's look at what scripture says. Second Timothy chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall the lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, verse 3, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Next verse, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Look at the next verse now. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Having a form of godliness. There are people that are in church. They will look at you and say, you are not holy. They are more holier than you. They are even more holier than pastor. Heady. High-minded. But in all, they have a form of godliness. We are the one that started Lafayette Church. What do you want to tell me? 
You are a proverb. You are in Romans. You are not in Corinthians. Oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you? He said, did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? God has left some people. We read it on Wednesday. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. If you have lost your love and passion for God, you are not a kingdom addict. You are just trying to come to church so that they will not say that you have backslidden. But scripture said that a backsliding in heart is filled with his own ways. You can be in church and you are backslided. Neat. Many have lost their zeal, lost their passion, lost their commitments. They're just filling the form. Having the form, having the form of godliness. Dicking, the way you are going these days, um, this is not the way we started this thing. <laughs> we are there before, we are there before. Where are you now? But I want to let you know, it is very dangerous for anyone, including me talking to you, to lose his passion for God and get blessing from God. Once you become a lover of yourself more than lovers of God, a lover of God, you will struggle by yourself. Everything you will do, you will be doing in the energy of the flesh. But scripture says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's not of him that runneth, not of him that willeth, but of God that showeth mercy. No man receiveth anything except it be given to him from above. God is still the principal determiner of what anyone here will receive. So people, one small lifting swells their head. One small lifting. One small open door. Their attitude will just switch quick. But I want to let you know, God can do like this. Angel, blue breeze for Before you know what's happening, that thing that is making you puff up, you will just discover that the thing has reduced. Please, may God not reduce you. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Or a robot's mother told him, Or as God keep lifting you, please, I beg you, I am your mother, keep seeing yourself small in your own eyes. I am your mother. Please keep seeing yourself small in your own eyes. And he transferred that same legacy to his children. This is what my mother told me. I beg you, before I go, please maintain this cause. As God keep lifting you, as God keep blessing you, please keep seeing yourself small in your own eyes. Do you know that some people now, to clean chair in church is an insult. To sweep church is an insult. Those are for newcomers. Those are for people that just got born again. We are past that level. Which level? Who give you level? It's simply an indication you are no longer a lover of God. You are just first service. Which unit do you belong? First service. Which unit do you belong? Second service. Which unit do you belong? Third service. David lamented, for we see not our signs. Hear me? What is still making signs work for you is because your heart is still after God. The moment you lose touch, 
you are no longer addicted. You are no longer passionate after God. You will not see your signs. Scripture says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You remember that man we met in uh, Stambik? When he needed job desperately, he was regular in church here. Now he has gotten the job, he's very busy. Uh, my wife is the one coming now, I don't have enough chance. May God not withdraw that job. I just remembered him now. And when he was talking to us, he was feeling very cool. <laughs> for we see not our signs. Please. My prayer for you today is that God will take you back to your first love. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Some people come to church and they feel as if they are God's auntie and God's uncle. Jesus said, I am among you as one that serveth. As one that serveth. Let me say this, so I want you to hear it. I'm still a small boy in the eyes of God. And I will continue to remain a small boy. Where have I reached that I will not be swelling like puff puff? What have I seen? What have you seen? That you will forget where God picked you from. You know, many of that's one mistake we do. We forget where God has picked us from. If you remember where he picked you from, your head will be cool. Your head will be cool. Where you are now, it is not your power that brought you there. There is a force that moved you there. There is a force that moved you there. If God withdraws his hand for one second, there will be katakata. For we see not our signs. The reason is very simple. You have lost your love for God. David said, O oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longeth for thee. Please, I beg you, let nothing reduce your longing for God. Because the moment your longing for God is reduced, you are no longer a kingdom addict. Coming to his house will look like a body. They are troubling me. If I don't come now, Pastor Madawa will be disturbing me. Pastor Benga will not allow me to rest. Please, allow them, let them stay at home. Anyone that is asking you whether you are in church loves you. I'm telling you the truth. What is addiction? Because your addiction for God is what initiates your undying focus. Your undying passion. What is addiction? Because we, we must know what addiction is so that we can trace it. Trace it. An addict is one who is conscious of his time to meet with a pal. Maybe a drinking joint. An addict is conscious of his money to satisfy his longing soul. One thing I know about drunkards, they may not have money to give their wife for food, but there must be money for gold. One thing I know about addicts, there may not be money to pay transport for children or to buy biscuits for children, but there must be money for cigarettes. That money need a miss. The morning cigarettes. The one he will smoke in the morning and the one he will smoke in the night. There must always be money for that cigarette. Am I saying the truth? That's an addict. Every other thing can fail, but that one must not fail. An addict is driven by an unusual force. 
So to be an addict is to be devoted and surrendered to something habitual and excessively to the point of public notice. Do you know that an addicted smoker is not a shame? Lie, lie. Shame of what? Something that gives him satisfaction and pleasure. Anytime I take it, I feel high. You, they will tell you, I feel high. I remember one of our close relations then in Lagos. Even if the wife is complaining that the children have not eaten, he will say, stop disturbing me. You know, this thing is my life wire. Life. He calls cigarette life wire. He's dead now. He's dead. He didn't die of heart attack. The heart just suddenly failed to work. That's an addict. Left pocket cigarette, right pocket cigarette, chest pocket cigarette. He asks for nothing from any friend. Please, just 100 naira that will keep me for the next sticks of cigarettes. And they will feel that they are doing him a favor, not only that they are contributing to his death. That's an addict. An addict can die for anything that he believes in. An addict is an extremist can be influenced by what he believes. So, being a kingdom addict simply means having an addiction and devotion to the kingdom of God to the point of public notice. He's addicted to this God. Abraham was addicted to the point that God said, I know concerning Abraham, he will command his household after me. Meaning that uh, man knows, God also do what? Knows. I know concerning Abraham. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will do what? As for me and my house. Every addict lives out their passion. Every one of us seated here now, there is one thing we cannot pretend about. It is our passion. Anything you do habitually, regularly, consistently, people know it. It is easy for you to exhibit your real you no matter where you are. They can say without missing word, if it is this one, I know it about this person. I know it about this person. There are some things people cannot believe about you. Why? They know your passion when it comes to some things. Am I saying the truth? So no matter the lies that flies around, if it's this one, I know what he can do, I know what he cannot do. If you are truly passionate, if you are truly a lover of God, it doesn't need announcement. You don't need to tell people, I love God though. No, it is not announced, it is seen. Paul said, you are the epistles that men read. You don't announce to people that you are an addict. They will see it. It's noticeable. It cannot be faulted. Even in your office. Even in your street. In your neighborhood. This one. I know it.
Addiction is driven by passion. 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 Passion cannot be explained by words. Why? Because only you know what you feel about God. Only you know what you feel about what you love. Our passion is driven by our love. So you must define your love for God so that he can define your place on the earth. A kingdom addict feels natural in everything he does in his service towards God. He's not seeing it as something too special. He just takes delight in doing it. No wonder the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant you your heart desire. Delight. Delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 1 and verse 1. Studio put that scripture. Psalm 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standed in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of his Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He doesn't see the word as a thing of struggle. But his delight is in the law. It takes delight. Anything you have delight for, you don't struggle with it. Anything, anything you have delight for, you don't struggle with it. Some people have delight for home video. So they don't struggle to even stay awake five hours in the night. Through or false. They don't even blink. Oh, it's three o'clock. Oh, oh, oh. Delight. Some people can just to the point that they can forget other things. Delight. So addiction makes you to respond to the things you naturally love. Likewise, if your love for God is in place, you will respond to God and the things of the kingdom without a reservation, without pressure, without anyone begging you. When it is time for prayer, you are not seeing it as a body. You are seeing it, ah, <laughs> oh, just like David said, a day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. A day, a day. And the prayer is not even up to one hour, 30 minutes. While the prayer is going on, some people will be checking clock for pastor. Pastor is over staying on the altar. I think Dickens Botchama, people need to go and warn Pastor. He's overstaying. Can't you see his message is overstaying of recent? <laughs> that person is not in church. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He came as a United Nations observer. you are in church and you are eager to run away. Please run away first. Because where a man's heart is, that's where his attention is. <laughs> Don't come to make up the number. You are the one that needs God. God is not the one that needs you. If you jump out today, nothing less than seven person will take your place. So don't, don't be in church at the marking time. <laughs> he doesn't know that I have appointment. <laughs> Who give you appointment? Is it not God? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? 
An addict does not see his presence in the house of God as a time being wasted. Let's read Psalm 24. I mean Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days. I'm not saying you should abandon your work of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hear me? Kingdom addicts, they have what we call priority. When God's house becomes your priority, until that passion is fulfilled, nothing else is satisfied. Kingdom addict sees the, the house of their father as a priority. So if you are not a kingdom addict, I want to let you know you will be on the same spot, revolving in the same circle. Only kingdom addicts go the extra mile to make sure that things are working better. Things are working better. I just remember one of my friends now, Mr. Moses. We have tried all strategy to make sure that we get this man ordained. He refused. We said, okay, become a deacon. He refused. Become pastoral assistant. He refused. But that man cannot step into the church see one thing that is not right without doing it. If you see choir is singing now and one microphone is misbehaving, without announcement, before tomorrow morning, he has bought another one. If he comes to church and see that people are standing, people are standing, if the market is opening that day, it will bring nothing less than 100 chairs. If he spots that, any spot, we say, who is the head of sanctuary? He will go and look for the person by himself. He say, can't you see? This is our father's house. He will make sure that they get materials to work. That's a kingdom addict. Let me tell you a brief of his story. He said, Lord, bless me. And God asked him, if I bless you, what will you do? Because many of us now we are praying, this year, my new dawn. <laughs> my new dawn. It must dawn. And God is saying, if it must dawn, what will you do? God is watching also. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He fasted for three days. He was tired of where he was walking. The osusu he was doing was not yielding as he expected. And God now asked him, if I bless you, what will you do? Number one, I will not take my eyes away from the house. From the house. I will pay my tithe regularly. I will take care of the needy. And God asks him, Are you sure? Because it's easy to say it. Oh. It's easy to say it. God said, Write it down. Write it down. He wrote it down. And God now replied, If you mean it, then you will see it. Before you know what's happening, God opened a door for him. Somebody connected him, let them join together, and then um, do one supply. He supply badges to oil companies. If you know what badges are. That was how God opened the first door. From that one now, they now say, okay, don't join this man again. Be doing your own. From there, that's how the man... It, he has entered what we call point of no return. As at 2005, his tithe is not less than 1 million. As at 2000, we are in what? 
As at 2005, his tithe is not less than 1 million. The blessing was too, too obvious to the point that he was building their new house. The wife didn't know. So one day he told the wife that, um, get ready, we are going out. And anything you are carrying now, know that that's the only thing you carry. The wife couldn't understand the code. So they now entered the place. The place was looking strange. He said, this is our new house. Everything you left there is not coming back here. The wife fainted. He said, that's your, that's your wardrobe. Go and check it. Everything you are looking for is there. Everything you left there, dash it out. It's not coming here. Say with me, kingdom addict. As at that time, he was, as at that time, his personal welfare to members was not less than 500,000. And he has nothing less than 30 widows in the church that he sends the money to me. I pay them 15,000 every month. One month, he forgot. His business almost ran into katakata. He said, Pastor Tony, something is wrong. I said, what is wrong? He said, there's trouble. There's trouble. I said, which trouble, sir? He said, I just remembered now that I've not given the widows their money. I said, ah, you better run. And as he did it, God supernaturally intervened for him. That's the first time I saw someone, others are running to Shell for job. Shell is asking him, go to Gabon. Go to so and so place. Go to so and so place. Make tender. Bring us your quotation. Others are struggling. Others will sit in their office. The work is coming to meet them. David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. Where is your heart? Because all the things you have been pursuing, how many have you catch? It is not those that pursue good that get good. It is those that pursue God. Do you know what? Jesus only called kingdom addicts. He didn't just call anybody. <laughs> I was say, what will it take for me to inherit the kingdom of God? He said, <laughs> he will say your house. Say your jeep. Sell all those things. The man say, What? He said, until you do that, you can't follow me. Meaning, until you lose touch with things, you can't be in touch with God. Some people are driven by cars, what they can get. But God is looking at, if your heart is with me, those things won't be a problem to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things that the Gentiles are pursuing shall be added. You won't struggle to get them. You will not beg to get them. Do you know that Papa now, there are some properties that people have dashed in that he doesn't even know where they are. He has not even seen. He's only hearing that uh, you have houses in some place. He uh, said, where is it? You can only live in one place per time. Am I saying the truth? You, you can't live in Canaan land. Uh, okay, I will live partly in Canaan land. I will live small in Portacot. It's a lie. You will be so blessed to the point that um, you will make sure that the blessing is going out. That's God's condition. I will bless you. And thou shall become what? A blessing. I will bless you. So kingdom addiction is less of self, more of God. Less of self. Anytime you are thinking more of self, you can't be an addict. Because you are status driven. Last 
lastly, hear this. Addiction brings you to a level of relationship with God. Job 22. Job 22, let's take it from verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. Verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And lay up his word in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. The next verse now. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty. Of silver acquaint now thyself. Now hear me. Let me break that word acquaint. Some know me here as Pastor Tony. Three of us. Some know me maybe because I've pastored them before. Am I saying the truth? Some people may think they know me because of WhatsApp message. You don't know me. I say you don't know me. The only person that know me well here, I'm Pastor Jeme, I'm Bishop Abiyoye, Pastor Nitiri. Papa will know me as one of his pastors. But if he needs inner detail, he will find that from Ojeme and Pastor and Bishop Abiyoye. So you don't truly really know the person. Acquaint now thyself. Some people just know you by, their, by your name. Some people just know you because you have favored them. True or false? Some people just know you because uh, you pay their school fees. That's not knowing. That's just knowing an aspect of his goodness. Acquaint now. The people that do know their God, they shall be what? Strong and they shall do what? Exploit. Jesus said, I no longer call you servant. I call you friend. I call you what? So an addict. <laughs> a good example is Abraham. Abraham, my friend. Abraham, my what? So addiction brings you to a level of relationship with God. Where you now begin to feel God's desire. You know what God loves. You know what God will want. And what will God be looking for this time is not your money. What is God looking for? That men should be saved. Soul winning. God desire that men should be saved. One of the things that God told um, T.L. Osborne told Papa before he passed on. Is it 53 things or 59 things why we need to win souls? After that, it dropped on Papa. <laughs> Perspective changed. Check it now. After that time, there is nothing that we are doing in Living Faith Church that is not connected to soul winning. Am I saying the truth? If we are not winning souls, if men are not saved, you are wasting time. You are just filling form of ministry. You are CEO. You are not pastor. You are managing director. You can't truly love what God loves and you are not being on the reach out. So there are some people seated now. Last year they didn't win any soul. They didn't go for any evangelism and you claim that you love God and you claim that you are a kingdom addict. I won't tell you you are a liar. Use your mouth talk. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? A kingdom addict will love what his friend loves. This is my friend's interest. Let's make it work. Let's make it work. Now we are talking about taking territory. The territory taking mandate. 
all over. Do you know that get, driving this church to 10,000 is a small thing? Do you agree with me? It's a small thing. Even if we bring 12, 12, seven, this place will not contain. I said, this place will not contain. So where does our addiction comes in now? Lord, this February, one soul. Lord, by all means, give me one soul that will abide. That's an addict. In prayer, he's praying. Any opportunity to reach out. Lord, as I go to talk to this person, Holy Ghost, convict him. Convict this man. An addict is in covenant part with God. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the words that have gone out of my mouth. God establishes covenant with Abraham. Why? Abraham like what I like. He will do what I like. When you are a kingdom addict, passionate and a lover of God, hear me? You have entered the realm of covenant. By myself have I sworn in blessing. I will do what? Bless you. When you become a kingdom addict, God gives you a name that is beyond the place. Why? You never stop longing for God. You are not tired. You are always passionate. You never stop longing for God. What will make his house glorious is your greatest desire. I want to let you know this year you will not struggle for blessing. Blessing will be pursuing you everywhere you go. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. And lastly, you cannot be an addict and not camp around addicts. You are always in the midst of people that love what you do. Do the same thing like you. A gossiper is always in the company of gossipers. A backbiter is in the company of backbiters. A praying man is always in the company of praying men. Check your company. It's because you love what they do. If you don't love what they do, nothing will interest you and nothing can keep you there. An addict is always found in the company of his fellow addict. Where do you find smokers? Where do you find bruku to drinkers? Abba! Because that's where his addicts are. The people that feel him, the people that flow with him. You understand me, I understand you. So if you are an addict, you will be found where your fellow addicts are. Where do you find prostitutes? Where? And where do strangers come there? No, talk. Strangers come near there. It's only addicts like them come there. So addicts will always be found in the company of fellow addicts. And let me summarize with this. Being a kingdom addict is not a gift. It's a choice. It's not a gift. Oh, the way they see this person. Be like they born and for church. Be like they mama born him on Sunday. So they call him wine Sunday. No. It is just your choice. One thing have I desired. That will I seek after. It's your choice. But I want you to hear this before we pray. Do you want life to be sweet for you? Follow God. Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. Your portion on this earth is determined by your addiction for God. Rise up to your feet.
David prayed a prayer, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said, cast me not away from your presence. He said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. I know you once had passion for God, but circumstances and situations have made you lose touch. You are no longer passionate as you used to. <laughs> you are going to pray this morning, Lord, bring me back to my first love. He said, I will take away the heart of stone and I will give them a heart of flesh. Lord, bring me back to my first love. I want to reestablish. I want to rededicate my heart to loving you, to loving the house. I will be part of the advancing force, growing the church. Lift up your voice and pray right now. Father, renew my heart. Restore my passion for your house. I rededicate my heart to running after the cause of this kingdom. To pursue after your desire. The things you love. Lord, renew my heart. Restore my passion for the house of my God. Restore my passion for the growth of this church. Restore my addiction for prayer. Restore my addiction for word study. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore my addiction. Restore my addiction. Restore my passion. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever stole my passion away, my passion for the word, my passion for prayer, my passion for praying for the lost souls, Lord, restore my passion. Restore my addiction. Spirit of God, let your hand come upon me afresh. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and pray until your heart is rededicated, until your heart is restored. Nothing may work. Lift up your voice, cry from the depths of your heart. The reason why things are not working in your hand is because you have abandoned God. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, restore my love. Restore my addiction. Restore my passion for the house of my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All eyes closed or heads bowed. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus? You need this fresh touch of God upon your life. Wherever you are, inside and outside, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, carry your bag and your Bible and come forward quickly. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you pray that prayer with me, and you are sincere, and you mean it, just come right now. I want to pray with you. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. Anybody can make Lord, I Whatever you are, come quickly right now. I give you my soul. I for you, oh Lord. Every step that I take, every moment I'm away. Jesus, unto them that come unto you shall you in no wise cast out. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. I stand as your servant this morning and I decree the guilt of their past, they are rolled away. Every cause, every accusation of the wicked over your life. This morning by this oil, the spell is broken in the name of Jesus. From today, new events, new events, 
the hand of God will not depart from your life in the name of Jesus Christ whatever is manipulating issues negatively over your life and your destiny that spell is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you today the hand of God establish your restoration in the name of Jesus Christ put your hands together for Jesus please open your eyes turn and follow this man right now turn and follow this man right now put your hands together for Jesus as you partake of this communion this morning your love for God is restored your passion for God is renewed say amen like a believer whatever made you lose touch with the house of God I see this morning as your morning of restoration if you are saying amen say better amen it is settled for you no more will you be found behind while others are in front you are not saying amen like a believer everything you others have been pursuing after hear me before this month will be over those blessings will be finding its way into your life so shall it be in jesus name we pray